Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Stable Diffusion Experimental. While everyone is very excited about Flux, and I am too, today I wanted to talk to you about the first Viton that I am actually excited about. The name is Cat Viton, and it is pretty great. Being a fashion photographer myself, and having tried my hand at clothes swapping since, well, basically a year now, I have always been very vocal about the fact that Vitons and other methods like IP adapter do not work quite well with clothes. And that's just because there's not enough resolution, whether it be at the actually getting the data from the clothes onto the model that's influencing the results or in the actual latent. Textures, logos, anything like that is way too small in order to render out properly. So why am I excited about a Viton today? Well, I have been testing this Cat Viton for a week now and it is pretty amazing. There are a few caveats here and there, like the fact that it's useful as a first pass, as a base of sorts, rather than an actual one-click solution to close transfer at least in the eyes of someone who works in the fashion industry, and the fact that its license is non-commercial only. But apart from these kind of issues, I am most excited about this because this proves that closed transfer is definitely possible and it's only a matter of time. So first of all, what are VTONs? VTON stands for Virtual Try-On, and most of them are based on a tech that's called Zero Shot. Zero Shot aims at taking one input image, that is the person image that should be wearing an item of clothing, and the reference image, that is the item of clothing we want on that person, and then by diffusing the encoded latent, getting the actual result of the person wearing that garment, without any other passages involved. This is the wrapper for or ConfUI. I will leave the link in the description below so that you can install it and run it. There's a couple other wrappers, but this is the one that worked for me. It is based on this research here. I will link this one as well. And if you want to learn about how it works a bit more, I have left the paper as well in the description below. And it's very interesting. The main takeaway from the paper is that the researchers and the developers wanted a very lightweight model. And in order to do that, they purge a lot of layers in the models that they're using. And they use the base model as well instead of fine tunes because they didn't want any training data actually that could skew the biases and they got rid of clip more on that later so we talked about a wrapper what is a wrapper a wrapper is basically a one click node that does everything that it needs to do in itself and while that's convenient to get fast results with minimal efforts from the user it also hinders flexibility and the possibility for every user to have a different configuration of the tool. So let's take a look at the node first. This is the Cat Viton wrapper. It accepts these inputs. Image, which should be the image of the person that you want to be wearing the garment. Mask, which is a mask referencing where the garment should appear. Refer image, which is the reference image for the garment. Mask grow, which grows the mask for where the garment should be placed. Mixed precision, which is the precision model that you want to use. In order of better theoretical results, we got FP32. FP16 and BF16. Now be aware that the FP32 takes way longer than the other two. Seed, of course. Control after generate. You already know what it does. In this case, it randomizes the seed. Steps, which you want to have a lot of, since I think that these uses are modified runway ML model for in painting. So between 40 and say 50. And CFG. Now, if you read the paper, which I'm sure you didn't, you can see in the paper that the best results they get are between 2.5 and 3 for CFG values. I personally prefer CFG at 2.5, but of course, the higher the CFG value is, the better the texture and the overall fidelity of the garment will be. But starting from 3.5, the quality degrades fast. The only output, of course, is an image. Let's build a pipeline then. The first thing we want, of course, is a load image node, and that's gonna be our subject. Then we want to duplicate that load image node and get our reference image in. In this case, I am going for simple but not too simple, and I'm swapping a t-shirt for another t-shirt. But while the first t-shirt is a very plain white t-shirt, second t-shirt, our reference image, has a pattern on it. So let's hook up our image here and our reference over here. Then we are going to need a mask. There's so many different ways of getting masks, but 
Overall, what you really want to do is get a mask that is as close as possible to the target reference that you are projecting on top of the subject. So you could use segment anything, you could use custom masks made in Photoshop, for example, you could use anything. In my case, I'm just going to right click on the subject, open in mask editor, and then create a mask myself. It's not going to be the most precise ever, but in my testing, if the reference image is not too complex, it will fit the bill. So once I'm done, I'm going to save to node and I'm going to hook up the mask right over here. Please remember that the mask and the subject must have the same size. Let's bring this cat V down over here and then we want to have an output. So let's do a preview image. The settings I'm using are fairly stock. I'm going to have mask row at 25, mix precision at FP16, seed 0 and randomize, steps 50, CFG 2.5. But wait, you don't know the size of these images, you say. Well, I don't, but what the wrapper does, it resizes them if they are higher than 700 by 1000 to 700 by 1000. And how do I know that? Well, that's because I have tried to break it. So let's hit Q prompt and see what happens. Right now I am using FP16 for mixed precision, which is not the fastest, not the slowest, not the most precise, not the least precise. And there we go. Now let's bring this image over here, our reference, so that you can see it a little bit better. Let's hit Cute Prompt again. What we can notice right off the bat, and we got another generation here, but the results are fairly similar, is that the color and pattern are recognized. And even if they're not perfect, the overall size of the garment, the positioning and the relative sizes of, for example, the sleeves, the neck, the overall length, they're all very well balanced. And across different generations, everything is where it's supposed to be. Now, the patterns aren't perfect, but what you could do is then try to apply different things like a custom LoRa, for example, or an IP adapter or whatever you want to do in order to fix that. But at its core, then you would have a generation, an image that has the actual good base from which to start. You don't have a completely random different item of clothing. You have the item of clothing you want to end up getting, at least in terms of size, color, overall kind of pattern. And then you just have to fix that a bit. Is it perfect? Is it a one-click solution? No, of course not. But even as we try with different patterns, for example, and colors, the overall results are consistent enough. You can know what to expect out of it, and the result is not that bad. The number of lines in the texture is correct, the color is mostly correct, the lighting is correct, everything is where it should be. Something that I cannot say that most of the other vitons and other methods for this actually do, at least not with this success rate. But of course you can say, this is very easy, this is just a t-shirt to another t-shirt. Let's try something harder. So in this case, I have extended the mask in order to use this jacket as a reference. And as we can see, the colors are quite right. The material looks right. It's not as shiny as it should be. The line here is where it should be. The position of the buttons looks good. The pocket is where it should be and it's as big as it should be. It goes from slightly upwards of this button up until this other button here and it goes from up here until here. So again, relative positions are great. What it's not doing well though are little details and that brings us back to one of the things that I first said. There's just not enough pixels. There's not enough resolution to resolve these tiny details. That's why sometimes the textures feel a bit off. That's why it cannot resolve buttons all too well. But you might say, well, let's just up the resolution then. Well, for one thing, it is hard locked. You could obviously try to break the code that it's based on in order for it to accept different resolution. But at its core, at its base, Cat Viton is based on SD 1.5. And how do I know that? Well, apart from the fact that they say so in the paper, if we take a look at the actual models that are used for this Viton, and you can see them on Baidu NetDisk and now finally on Google Drive, because before they had Google Drive, I had to compile my own hugging face repo. But as I was saying, the folder structure is basically 
very similar to Runway ML folder structure, with a few more things like Danspose, Dress Code, Max, SCHP, and Viton 16K. But if we take a look inside of Stable Diffusion Painting folder, for example, we can find a scheduler and a unit that have the same folder structure as the unit and the scheduler from Runway ML Stable Diffusion in Painting. So in case you wanted to try swapping a model for another, you know that you have to use a model that is compatible with Runway ML, but spoiler alert, it won't work. So let's do another couple experiments, like changing the mixed precision and trying on different item of clothing, and then I will talk about how to install it. So does it do logos and prints? Yes, it does. Another great thing that I like about this model is that it does print really well. Now, text, not so much, because diffusing text, at least for 1.5 or SDXL models, has always been basically impossible. But as far as prints go, this is very similar to what we get here. There's a couple of things off, like this hoof over here, and the face of the horse is not exactly great, but nothing that like four seconds in Photoshop cannot fix. And does it do more complex stuff, like this shirt over here, which has both prints, geometric lines, and the weird color? Well, yes, kinda. There's a few errors here and there, we don't get this print that should be here, but the overall shape of the island here, of the map, looks fine, the text doesn't look great, same as we said before, and it's getting kinda weird about the buttons, mostly because I think it cannot pick up with all these weird highlights and shadows here where the buttons should be. But overall the color is great, the two stripes are where they should be, the green border is where it should be, and it's of the color it should be and the overall length is pretty great. And even, and even if the mask wasn't great, it still rebuilt the arms correctly. Now let's try with different precision and see if FP32 can actually get this print over here that FP16 mixed. And it did, it can. It's not perfect, but we got it. Let's see if upping the CFG can help with that. Yes, upping the CFG actually helped in getting more details out of the textures. It's not quite perfect yet. This central part over here is completely different. And the text, of course, is a mumbo jumbo of words or, well, squiggly lines. But the patterns are better. The shape of this print is better. And most of all, the higher CFG here is not breaking damage too much. Even if we start seeing hallucination, like this tattoo over here. So be wary of upping the CFG too much like in this case where I went all the way up to 6 and the image is completely fried. Talking about things that we can and cannot do with this wrapper, you might have noticed that we don't have text prompts. If you remember from the introduction or you've read the paper, that's because clip was completely purged. We don't have clip anymore and so we don't have conditioning. And that's because the authors and the developers felt like clip already had biases about how a specific kind of clothing should look like. So they got rid of that. But that also means that we cannot, for example, use any traditional control nets, as we cannot work on conditioning in any way. So while I understand that, that's kind of a bummer. I know that there's some control nets that work on the model level rather than on the conditioning level, so that might be worth looking into. But then again, this is a very specific model that they are using in order to achieve these results. So that might not work at all. Now for the installation process. I am using this repo because apart from the model requirements, which are the same throughout all the repos, the overall install process is much simpler. What you just need to do is go over to your local ConfUI install directory, go inside of custom nodes, right click, open in terminal, and then copy this line here, which is git clone, and then the URL for the GitHub repository, and paste it inside of your terminal and press enter. Now it's cloning the wrapper, and it's gonna be in a specific folder. In order to access that folder and install the requirements, you wanna do cd, and then the name of the folder, which in this case is confui underscore cat viton underscore wrapper. Remember, it's case sensitive, so you'd want uppercase where they should be, and press enter. Now that we are inside that folder, what you need to do is type pip install dash r requirements 
app.txt and while it goes through all of the installations, what you want to do is either go own Baidu Net Disk or Google Drive, but if you are not in China, it's very difficult to download stuff from Baidu. Or as another option, go to this Hugging Face repo that I compiled just for you, dear subscribers. You can find the link in the description below. And then download all of these models inside of a very specific folder. And that folder is inside of your ConfUI models directory and most probably it's going to be a new folder which if you don't have you just create one and it's called cat viton and just go here and you place all of these models inside of here you cannot change any name be it of models folders or other files because otherwise the wrapper will break now one thing of note is that this wrapper uses very specific versions of some dependencies. So in case something is failing for you during the install process, it's most likely that one of your dependencies is not the right version. But most of the time you're going to see here a warning by pip that tells you which dependencies want a specific version of another dependency so you might want to try forcing the install for the correct version of that dependency and that is all for today i hope you end up liking cat Beaton as much as i do and i hope you get why i am so excited about this and again i am not excited about this because i think it's perfect i am excited about this just because of the implications that having such a model bring to the table if you like this video leave a like like and subscribe. I want to thank all of my supporters on Coffee. I will be seeing you next week with a Flux video because I really like the model from what I've seen and tested up till now. And maybe we will have another series of videos that won't be stable if you're for X. So stay tuned for Flux for professional creatives. My name is Andre Bayoni. You can find me on Instagram at Rizunobushi or on the web at andrebayoni.com. And same as always, I will be seeing you next week.